In this video, I'm gonna try to save you a bit of extra money. Um, we're gonna be going through a handful, I think eight in total of Zoho One applications that are kind of outside of some of what we normally implement with the goal of highlighting some of the extra areas that you can save some money with your Zoho One license. Before I jump in, I do wanna ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave us any questions, feedback and video requests down in that comment section. And as always, just head on over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to chat about how we can help with your Zoho install. So as we all know, Zoho One kind of branded as the operating system for business has a ton of different Zoho apps, right? I mean, they've got 50 or so that are included with the subscription. Obviously, they're not all made equal. But one of the beautiful things is that because you've got them all included at a ridiculously low price, especially if you are on the uh, all employee pricing tier, there's a lot of opportunity to save money using more and more Zoho apps over time. So while a lot of people come in and really start with maybe forms and those forms are creating leads in CRM and they're kind of working through that flow. Maybe they're also using Zoho projects. There are a ton of these other more ancillary Zoho apps where if you start moving over because they're all included in your Zoho One license, you're just gonna save more and more money. So today we're just gonna go through eight of those, kind of the big ones that we see come up a lot. And we're gonna just side by side them a little bit on a pricing basis versus their direct competitors. So starting with the first one here is Zoho Desk. Desk is gonna be used for your ticketing, your knowledge base, a lot of your customer service and back and forth interaction. Um, it's a very good tool, right? It's going to be essentially just as good as a lot of the competitors. There might be a feature here or there that maybe you like it more in Desk or you like it more in Zendesk or Freshdesk. But at the end of the day, it's very solid and essentially as good as its direct competitors. So let's take a look. I mean, if you're pricing this thing against Zendesk, again, keeping in mind, you already have it included with Zoho One. I mean, really to get like the standard kind of popular version of Zendesk that's going to include, you know, skill based routing, analytics, customer service, uh, SLAs, right, which are all included with Zoho Desk, um, you're going to be paying $115 per month per user, right? And again, I picked this plan here because this is the one that has the comparable functionality against Zoho Desk, right? So really at the end of the day, you're in for 115 if you want the same functionality as Desk in another tool. Similar with Freshdesk, Freshdesk is a little less expensive than Zendesk, but here you're looking at either 15, maybe 78 if you want some of the AI features, but even let's say, you know, we'll go with the pro version at $49 a month. Um, that's almost 50 bucks a user per month that you're saving. And again, that license doesn't even include everything that's in Freshdesk. So realistically, if you want a chat tool, you're tacking on another 20 bucks. That's included in Zoho Desk, right? You want to be able to call people. You're tacking on a little more money, um, right? So at the end of the day, moving over from a Zen Desk or a Fresh Desk, you're looking at saving at the very minimum 15 bucks a month. More realistically, you're on one of these 49 or, you know, 55 or 115 price tier plans. So you could be saving on average, you know, 50 to 100 bucks per user per month just by moving over to Zoho Desk, which again is already included in your Zoho One subscription. And it will get them access to all the other Zoho One apps that you're already using. Next one on the list, this is one of my favorite money saving apps inside of Zoho One, Zoho Sign, right? Just an absolutely slam dunk, easy win here. If you compare this to something like DocuSign, where you know maybe each of your sales team members have a license, right? You're paying 25 bucks per user per month. A lot of the times you actually end up needing this pro one so you can do more automation around it. Um, like, right, multiple recipient documents. That is not rare. That happens all the time. Um, conditional logic to calculate values, getting attachments, right? Having a mobile version, right? I mean, come on. Uh, you're going to be paying at least 25. More realistically, you're going to be paying 40 bucks a month. And that's just for the licensing Let's say you also want to have some API, right? That you're going to automatically create and send some documents. You're tacking on even more, right? And this 300 a month, let's be really clear. That's for 100 documents, right? So you're paying about three bucks a document if you're automating things through DocuSign. In Zoho Sign, it's about 60 cents, right? So massive savings if you're going to automate things. 
But even if you're just going to use it normally, let's say you have your sales team inside of Zoho, they're working through the CRM, they're going to need to send their own documents, you're tacking on 25 bucks a month, Zoho Sign included has a direct integration to CRM, you can just turn it on and use it with no incremental cost, right? So I love moving people to Zoho Sign. Another popular one, Adobe Sign is about the same price here as DocuSign. So well worth a consideration because again, an e-signature is an e-signature. So as long as Zoho Sign is like compliant with your industry's requirements and your geographical requirements, there's really very little reason not to move people over and start using it. Another big one here, Zoho Billing. Now, not everybody runs subscriptions, but if you do, this is well worth taking a look at. Now, it doesn't have every single feature as clean and as perfect as all other subscription tools do, but it is very, very solid. Let's take a look at one of the ones that I find to be the most commonly used, Recurly. Um, really, the benefit of a subscription management tool is like storing multiple payment methods, retrying failed cards, and kind of reaching out to get those updates. Uh, they call that dunning management. And so really... With Recurly, at minimum, it's $250 a month, right? Don't be fooled by the zero. That's just for three months. If you want anything more like, hey, to retrying credit cards, which should be like just a default feature of a subscription management tool, um, or if you want ACH, you got to talk to sales, right? So you're going to be paying a lot more than $249 a month. Customizing your invoices, right? I want to put my logo on my invoice, right? Again, you're talking to sales here. In Zoho, that's just included right? You just get this included with your Zoho One plan for managing any of those subscription needs. Again, you've got that ability to tie it directly into CRM. You've got your customer portal. You've got customization features here. It is a very good tool. Well worth taking a look at. Go ahead and save yourself some money. I've also seen, I don't know if Recurly does it anymore, but I've seen some subscription management tools that are taking a percent of revenue. Don't let them do that to you. That's crazy. Definitely move to something that's just charging you on a flat rate basis. Another one here, not as massive of a cost saver, but another one that you can just stop paying for that other tool, Zoho Survey, right? So whether it's from CRM, whether it's from Zoho Desk, Zoho Projects, there are a lot of opportunities throughout your customer life cycle where you may want to gather some feedback about how you're doing. Zoho Survey is included and available for you on that. Again, benchmarking in against the most primary kind of alternative would be something like a Survey Monkey. Right. If you're on a team plan, you're 30 bucks per user per month. Nice thing with a survey tool, you probably don't need everybody on there, right? Like, because it'll be automatically sending the survey. So it's not like you need every single salesperson to be here. But what you'd also have to do is kind of read through this and see, hey, you know, I want to have more than one language. Okay. Well, now it's 90 bucks a month. Um, I want to have some randomization. I want to have multiple tabs, <laughs> right? Like, these are just kind of things that you would assume might be in there. Um, you're going to be paying that $92 per user per month for that if you need at least a couple users in there. And again, keep in mind, that's starting at three users. So this is actually $90 and this is actually, you know, $270. So they're a little sneaky on these pricing pages. Um, again, if you got Zoho One, this is included and it's already integrated with half the tools that you might be using inside of Zoho anyways. So why not? Give it a try. See if you can just trim a little bit of extra subscription costs out of your monthly budget. Here's another slam dunk. Zoho Click. Why not use this? Now, there are some people who are inside of like the Microsoft suite, right? And you've got Office 365 and you've already got Microsoft Teams set up. In that case, it really isn't a cost savings because you're going to keep 365 anyways. The big one I'd want to highlight here is if you're on something like Slack. I will tell you, Slack and Zoho Click are extremely similar, extremely similar. Zoho Click, that's going to be obviously included with Zoho One, whereas Slack, you know, you're going to need to pay for it separately. Um, again, don't be fooled here. You're only getting $4 a month for three months. This is going to be $8.75 for that pro plan. Again, you'd want to read through these features and see what in here you need. If you need single sign-on, you're paying $15 a month, right? So you always got to be careful. You come and you look, they, they highlight this best value one, but then they sneak features like single sign-on, which is like pretty standard stuff into this pro plan. So or into the business plan. Thing about Slack is that while it might not be the most expensive per user, you're probably going to have basically everybody at your organization on it, right? So if you've got 100 people in your org 
this ends up being quite a lot of money. Um, one of our clients, they have a couple thousand employees, right? So for them, moving over to Click from Slack was like a lot of money. We're talking five digits of savings here. So make sure to keep this one in mind. We love it internally. It's a phenomenal application. We honestly racked our brains and could barely find a single downside or con with this tool. Um, so well worth taking a look at. Another one here that we love is Zoho Flow. Um, I will tell you its biggest competitor, Zapier. I kind of have a bone to pick with these guys. I don't like really the way that they do business. Um, that'll be a separate video for a separate day. So I'm always happy to highlight that you can save a ridiculous amount of money by using Zoho Flow. Again, Flow is going to be included with your Zoho One package. You're going to be getting that professional tier. You're going to be getting a lot of included tasks per month on this. Um, so if we side by side this, 10,000 tasks per month with Zoho Flow, 10,000 tasks per month with Zapier, you're already up at like $170 per month. The one thing I'll tell you too with Zapier is as this goes up, you are not getting a good bulk pricing discount. They are brutal with this. They just charge you more and more and more and more. And you get to a place where if you end up relying on Zapier, oof, I feel for you. Um, but nice thing is with Zoho Flow, you've got the ability to build a lot of these integrations in-house, which saves you some money on like a professional services basis, right? Like we will show our clients how to use Zoho Flow and then they can do part of our implementation themselves, right? And it reduces the budget. And then again, you've got this included with Zoho One with a whole bunch of included tasks just to avoid having to pay out the wazoo for Zapier. Don't do it. Try to avoid this tool. Next up on the list is going to be Zoho Creator. This is an awesome one. So Zoho Creator, I would say, has two main purposes that can save you money. One is going to be building a bit of like a lightweight creator tool to extend the functionality of an existing app, right? So maybe we're in CRM. Maybe you have kind of a complicated quoting process with lots of different pricing math, and you're thinking about going and paying for a third-party quoting tool. Maybe we can build that in Creator, right? We've got implementations where client needs like a really nice mapping tool. Okay, well, you go look at Badger Maps, you go look at some of those other apps. Maybe I can just build this in Creator. But even as a side-by-side, -side, if we compare it to another kind of widely used low-code application builder, QuickBase, you know, again, $35, $55 a month. This is basically the price of a Zoho One license in and of itself. And then you've just got this included inside of Zoho One. On top of that, a lot of these tools have minimum numbers of users, right? So you have to get 20 users, right? Okay, well, what if I need 12? I just have to pay for 20? That sucks. So Zoho Creator saves you money in a lot of different ways, whether it's replacing a third-party tool that would be plugged into an existing Zoho app or if it's just replacing a custom app builder end to end and eliminating the need for that altogether. Just a ton of money that you can be shaving off of your monthly subscription costs. Last but not least, one of my favorites, Zoho Analytics. Zoho Analytics, of course, is Zoho's business intelligence and reporting tool. We love this thing. We use it constantly. Biggest two competitors for this one are going to be like Power BI and Tableau. Power BI being relatively inexpensive, but again, if you're paying for it separate and you've got Zoho Analytics included, you may as well get in there. Again, keep in mind here, a lot of these other tools will break it down into like viewers versus doers. Um, I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it came out well that way. So, you know, you're not paying too much with Power BI and sometimes BI is included with different O365 instances. So you might be kind of getting this for free where it's less important. One of the big ones, though, is Tableau, right? So let's say you've got a company, you've got 10 people who need to be able to see a dashboard, and you've got, you know, the main admin, and then maybe you've got two or three people that can actually kind of dive in and do some higher level stuff. It's like, good Lord, right? We're already up here at like eight grand a year just for like, you know, 14 people to use this tool. If you're a larger company, let's say you have a 20 person sales team, right? And they need to be able to see their commission dashboard, right? That's what this means. They're a viewer of the data. For those 20, maybe you have a couple different managers. Again, let's assume you only got one person who's really gonna be this main admin who can actually do anything in here. Realistically, you probably have more than one, but let's say best case scenario, you just have an analytics genius who can just handle it for the entire org. Again, you're like easily getting over $1,000 a month just for, you know, a 20 something person installation of a reporting tool. You start looking at analytics, you start seeing that this is included. You see that it's got like 
hundreds of different data connectors so that you're not having to build custom integrations to get your data in. And it, it starts looking pretty good. Starts feeling like maybe we could save a little bit of money and, and move over to analytics. So again, we really love Zoho One. It just is a ridiculously good deal at these different pricing tiers, especially again, if you're in a position where you can put all employees on it, the 37, the 45, ridiculously cheap. Um, but even at that flexible user pricing, when you start to add up all of these different applications and different ways that you can save money, it really does make sense. Couple little bonus ones I'll throw in here at the end. They're not as widely used by everybody, but they still are gonna save you money. Backstage, if you're running events, they don't charge a percent fee on revenue, right? So if you make money on events, you'll probably save money with backstage. Data prep as like a data permutation tool, absolutely awesome. And I'll tell you where data prep is going is trying to compete with tools like Skyvia. And if you've looked at Skyvia pricing, Good Lord, you can save quite a lot of money moving over to data prep, landing pages to get rid of unbounds, Zoho forms or replace Ninja forms or whatever paid form tool you're using. We didn't even talk about Zoho projects um, because obviously today I was trying to focus in on some of the less used applications. I mean, tons of money to save there. Don't get me started on CRM. I mean, you know, your baseline price there at 40 bucks a month, right? Versus Salesforce at 120 plus. Wow, <laughs> pretty offensive pricing that they have. Work drive, I mean, geez, there's just so many of these tools that are readily available, integrated with each other, and bundled up in the Zoho One license. So I really just think it's worth taking a look at. With that, I think we're ready to wrap up here for today. I won't rant at you any longer. Leave a question and comment down below. I'd love to see what your favorite money-saving Zoho apps are. Are there any that I miss that you're like, dude, Moving over to that saved me a big chunk of change. I'd love to hear from you. As always, appreciate when you like and subscribe on the video. Head over to Zanata.com if you need any help with your Zoho install. My name is Tyler Colt, and I will see you next time.